Hello, um, Drew Robinson here. I'm going over my research project, the presentation that we have to do for the, uh, the class here at Liberty University of the American Revolution. So the uh, the topic I chose is one about guy Francis Marion, right? You may have heard of him. Um, he's pretty locally right here where I live. He's a pretty significant uh, character, individual from his time during the Revolutionary War. So I'm looking at basically what effect did his actions have? This is the main question. What effect did his actions have on the outcome of the war? So to what extent did um, his actions as uh, his kind of guerrilla warfare tactics, so to say, have on the, uh, the, the final outcome of the American Revolution? Okay, so here's some kind of sub-questions I'm looking at. Was it a lack of British knowledge of the Southern backcountry? In other words, to what degree are the British to blame for the failures in their southern campaign or southern theater, the lack of British will to prosecute the war. So at some point, the British kind of realize, hey, um, it's not worth it here. All right, we 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 need to kind of pick up and pull out. Um, this 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 war is dragging on too long. It's costing too much money. So is that is that a uh, kind of an issue? Is that is that overshadow what he actually did, Francis Marion? And then the actions of the regular Continental Army. So Commanders like um, Daniel Morgan, Nathaniel Green, what they did in the South as as regular uh, commanders versus Marion and his group of um, kind of raid. I don't know if necessarily call them raiders, but irregular warfare. So a little background on Francis Marion. So he had served much like George Washington. He had served in a prior campaign alongside the British. In this case, he'd served in what's known as the Cherokee War here in the Carolinas. Um, and so he learned so two big things. One, guerrilla tactics that the Native Americans typically use. Right? So he kind of learned that. And you got to realize most of the men that served in Marion's uh, band knew that as well because they grew up in the region and they were had been exposed to Indian type of warfare. British arrogancy is another one, and that's going to kind of come back to haunt the British um, in their southern campaign. And then, so early in the war, he actually helped with the successful defense of Charleston, 1776. As the war dragged on and the British came back to Charleston and captured it, Marion actually um, escaped. Now, the, the, the legend is, and I write about it in my paper, is that he was uh, at a party and they locked all the doors of the party because they didn't want... Um, people to leave that was kind of the custom and he jumped out of a window because he wanted to leave and he when he did he broke his ankle and so he just left town after that so some of the raids he did these are the important ones now i don't want to get into like specifics of his warfare but you see with the tear coach swamp raid that's a nighttime was a nighttime raid unconventional to the british um they're not used to it uh at black mingo creek these were like the more significant ones here he defeated a larger British force. That is significant because it was one of his early raids, and he helped to gain um, notoriety, not only within the papers, but made the British aware of things he was doing. All right, And so the British, you're going to see Charles Cornwallis, he did, sent out a guy, Bannister Charlton, to find Marion and, and hunt him down and kill him. The siege of Fort Watson, that's one of the later ones he did, and it's an actual, it's a little different than the other raids, because it was a siege, all right? It's a prolonged engagement. And he actually did that with Henry Lee, um, father of later Confederate commander uh, Robert E. Lee. So that, that's significant. So you see with that, he is starting to become a little bit more a part of the regular army at that point. All right? He had gained so much notoriety. So let's look at the British failures. The British failures, um, like I said, Cornwallis, he dispatched Minister Tarleton, who was. Um, well known throughout the South, but what the thing that Tarleton um, did was he was very harsh towards the citizens in the countryside, and the British started to really fall out of favor favor with the local citizenry here in South Carolina, North Carolina. All right, so whereas they thought part of the Southern strategy, they could come to the South and get um, sweep up that it was a loyalist hotbed. Well, it really wasn't, and then especially because of their actions and, you know, burning things and, and going into villages, taking things, it led, it turned the local populace against them. 
I said too harsh in his pursuit of Miriam because they were going into houses. Hey, where's he at? Where's he at? Well, that's going to turn the local populace against you. At the Battle of the Waxhaws with Tarleton there, um, Tarleton, sorry, his army is accused of a massacre. Now it's kind of convoluted as to whether or not he ordered the massacre, but nonetheless, there was a massacre that took place and he was in charge of the British uh, regulars at that battle. So he's the one that gets the blame for it. So the British did not understand the Southern countryside um, and, 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 and the tactics that went along with that as well. And so that is kind of failure in the South. Like I said, it had become, the war was starting to become costly for them too. Uh, I've made the comparison before, kind of like America and Vietnam. After a little while, hey, it's time to get out. You know, it's not worth it anymore. Conclusion, all right? So this is the final things of what I found throughout my research, all right? Now, in here, in this area, okay, there's a there's a university named after Francis Marion, Francis Marion University. There's not one named after Daniel Morgan. There's not one named after Nathaniel Green. There are towns and such named after Marion as well. So he is locally esteemed, held in high esteem, uh, when uh, in comparison to some of the other generals. Um, but now he did, is responsible to some degree. I uh, maybe locally here with the highways and things named after him. He, maybe he's given too much credit. I mean, a lot of people say the Patriot, the movie The Patriot, from Mel Gibson, that is about him. All right. He didn't have a son killed in the war, but he had a nephew who served with him who was also who was killed. Um, so the big his biggest accomplishment was he worked in conjunction with the regular Continental Army. The British had thought it would be a quick sweeping victory through the South. We put that loyalist hop in and go through the Carolinas into Virginia, and then they could attack Washington. Well, what he did, uh, originally it worked, okay, but with the battle at um, Camden and uh, Charleston and Savannah was working, and remember that whole Southern Continental Army in Charleston and Benjamin Lincoln surrendered. So now they were left with nothing until Gates, you know, came in with another army. So it was kind of marrying on his own to slow the advancement. So there is, um, he is responsible to a degree, but the appointment of like men like Morgan um, and and Nathaniel Green, they worked in conjunction with Marion. Gates was not necessarily a proponent of doing that. Plus, Gates after um, after Camden, Gates was gone. They, uh, you know, he fled to North Carolina, so he wasn't in control anymore. In command anymore. So um, yes, to a degree, okay, he was a cause of the Patriot victory in the South. He was not the cause, which some people um, put forth, but yes, he was responsible to a degree.